Have you ever had your mind blown? If not, I think it's time I've showed you something. A former Japanese government official says the company responsible for the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant failed to keep a promise to contain leaks of radioactive water. Sumio Mabuchi is an executive member of Japan's Democratic Party which governed the country until last December. He served as an advisor to former Prime Minister Naoto Kan in the aftermath of the March 2011 disaster. Mabuchi told a party meeting on Wednesday that Tokyo Electric Power Company officials had promised back in June of 2011 to build shields around reactor buildings at Fukushima Daiichi that would block radioactive water from getting out. Tokyo Electric asked the government not to announce the agreement, saying that the company was worried that the building cost of $1 billion would add to its debt and could lead to market confusion. Mabuchi says the Kang government agreed not to make the deal public, but TEPCO did not follow through. A TEPCO official who attended Wednesday's meeting says he cannot confirm what went on at that time. And now back to our favorite hobby here on the internet, yelling at retards and telling them they're wrong. A Japanese minister has spoken about Fukushima to the International Atomic Energy Agency. He pledged strong leadership at the damaged plant to deal with the leakage of radioactive water. Science and Technology Policy Minister Ichita Yamamoto spoke on Monday at the annual IAEA General Conference. The government of Japan has decided to assume a proactive role to achieve a fundamental settlement of this issue. Yamamoto said the toxic water is not polluting the sea beyond a short distance from the plant's port. And he said Japan's food and drinking water are safe. We felt that putting our users in mortal danger for a quick buck was the right move. About 200 people later attended an explanatory session by Japanese nuclear regulators and energy officials. It was a good um, detailed meeting, but it did not uh, focus on the fundamental questions of uh, responsibilities and uh, the government role versus TEPCO's role. I think the government has realized that uh, they have not done a good job in exp expressing that, uh, and they need to do a lot better. Japanese leaders are hoping to dispel international concerns with a transparent approach over Fukushima. He's making me look angry. Let the people know I don't like them. Now the storm is causing more headaches for the people in charge of Fukushima Daiichi. Workers at the nuclear plant released more than 1,000 tons of rainwater that had pulled at the facility. Officials at Tokyo Electric Power Company said rain accumulated inside barriers around storage tanks for wastewater. Workers released water from seven areas onto nearby soil. The workers didn't release the water directly into drainage ditches that lead to the sea. We've determined that it's rainwater and are dealing with it accordingly. TEPCO officials say the rainwater contained between 3 and 24 becquerels of radioactive substances per litre. They say if the water does wind up in the ocean, it would meet the Japanese government safety limit of 30 becquerels per litre. Company officials say they will try to find ways to prevent rainwater from accumulating in the future. The people in charge of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant say they're dismantling a tank that's caused them a number of problems. Last month, more than 300 tons of highly radioactive water leaked out. Some of it has flowed into the Pacific Ocean. Officials with Tokyo Electric Power Company say they began taking apart the tank on Tuesday to find out what's wrong with it. They say they'll examine the tank to identify where the leak occurred. They say the work could take several days and about 350 similar tanks are installed on the grounds of the plant. Well, I'll tell you what happened. I just ran out of bullshit. All right, cut them off. So I don't have any bullshit left. I just ran out of it, you see. More and more groundwater that flows into the plant's compound is becoming contaminated. And government officials have held a briefing for potential bidders on projects to deal with that massive buildup.
Officials explained a plan to create a wall of frozen soil around the reactors to block groundwater from getting in or out. It will measure about 1.4 kilometers around and about 30 meters deep. The officials say the structure must withstand any rapid flow of groundwater and still be effective in places where there's plumbing. The officials say the structure must withstand any rapid flow of groundwater and still be effective in places where there's plumbing. They also outlined a project to reduce radioactive substances in the tainted water. They told the firms that they need equipment that can treat 500 tons of water a day. It has to drastically cut levels of 62 types of radioactive materials in the water. It will also need to reduce the amount of radioactive waste to one-fifth compared to current amounts. The government is earmarking about $210 million in reserve funds from this year's budget to deal with the problem. One more time, sir. All the cool people are doing Fishermen who work near the plant are also concerned about the leaks. They're planning to start catching small amounts of young fish to test for consumer interest and safety. But members of one cooperative say they'll postpone their trial in areas close to the coast. About 40 fishermen from Iwaki City agreed to delay the catch until next spring at the earliest. They say it will be too hard to convince consumers to buy the fish, and they say the handling of leaks at the nuclear plant is to blame. The head of the cooperative says he's furious that contaminated water may have reached the ocean. It's only natural that every fisherman in Iwaki is angry about the situation. Recent tests on seafood caught along the Fukushima coastline detected no radiation in most samples. Some of the seafood contained extremely low levels of radioactive substances. The fishermen say they'll go ahead with trial catches further from the coastline from late September. The Japanese are also working on their neighbors. A senior fisheries official has asked his South Korean counterparts to lift a ban imposed last week on imports of Japanese fish and other seafood. Kenji Kagawa of the Japan Fisheries Agency traveled to South Korea to make his case. He told them they were overreacting and without sufficient scientific evidence. Officials in Seoul have also said they'll impose restrictions on imports from all over Japan if they find any radioactive traces. Japan has some of the strictest food safety standards in the world. Our products have never fallen short of them. We cannot understand this ban from South Korea. Kaga said they agreed to continue talks with the help of experts. Well, we just wrapped up a session with the Japanese CNOs, and we're here at the Jansi offices. And as an executive in the electric utility industry, I need to reflect back on, on this whole experience and, and why are we here, what did we learn, what did we see. And, and I start back with the basic fundamentals of being in this business. What we do is raise the standards of living for millions of people across the country. We deliver a product. We generate electricity. We may not be heart surgeons, but without, heart, without us, heart surgery is not possible. And we do it in an environmentally clean manner. And that's important to me because I consider myself an environmentalist. It's a legacy that we're leaving for our children and our children's children, a green planet. But this past week, I was able to witness what happens when the nuclear reaction is not properly controlled. I got to see the dark side uh, of nuclear power and it was sad for me because I'm a firm believer in what nuclear power can do. And seeing abandoned homes, abandoned schools, uh, abandoned storefronts, abandoned cars, it, it, it's emotional because I believe in this product. And what I saw were TEPCO executives having to apologize to the community to their fellow workers, to us, for the pain that they've inflicted. These are lives that have been impacted forever. And these are innocent lives, children. So 
I need to take back, and, and the way it hit home to me is, this is personal. What we do is not just make electricity, but we're there at the behest of the local community. My family, my children live within the evacuation zone of the Beaver Valley Power Plant. I can never put myself in a situation that I have to apologize to my friends and neighbors that they can never go home again. I need to relay this message to all 3,000 of my workers. The experience I had of this being personal has to be personal with them, such that we always have safety in the forefront of everything we do. We can never, ever let this happen in the U.S. This is no longer just a business. It's now personal. On June 19, 2013, following the G8 summit, President Obama stood at the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin, Germany, and gave a speech about nuclear proliferation. And so as President, I've strengthened our efforts to stop the spread of nuclear weapons and reduce the number and role of America's nuclear weapons. President Obama said he wanted to bring nuclear warheads to their lowest level since the 1950s. But in that same month, his administration simultaneously unveiled a $275 billion plan over the course of 25 years to modernize its nuclear warheads and production capacity. In response to the administration's move, Greg Malos of the Los Alamos Study Group said that this proposed budget reflects bad management, bad priorities for the nation, and a lack of political courage and even savvy on the part of the president his party, and his appointees. It is a real disappointment, a travesty of management and policy. Now, according to a new report by the U.S. Government Accountability Office, the government's gross mismanagement of nuclear weapons also extends to the nuclear infrastructure that's already in place. You see, one arm of the Department of Energy is called the National Nuclear Security Administration, or the NNSA. It's supposed to improve national security through the military application of nuclear energy. But whether it's been able to do that effectively is questionable. Just take Los Alamos National Laboratory, located in Los Alamos, New Mexico. After a seven-year, $213 million upgrade to the security system that protects the lab's most sensitive nuclear bomb-making facilities, the security system does not work and will require millions of dollars in improvements. But aside from the wasted money, even the placement of the laboratory is problematic. You see, these facilities sit atop a fault line and remain vulnerable to collapse and therefore dangerous radiation releases. But let's go from New Mexico to Oak Ridge, Tennessee, where the price tag for a new uranium processing facility has grown sevenfold in eight years to more than $6 billion, all due to a number of structural problems that weren't caught until the final stages of the building's development. Now, those are just two examples, but the reality is that almost all of the major projects under the NNSA are seeing major errors in development. According to the U.S. Government Accountability Office, 10 of the agency's major projects combined are 38 years behind schedule and $16 billion over budget. Now advocates uh, say that spending is what we need to keep the country safe. But critics like U.S. Senator Claire McCaskill, chairwoman of the Senate Homeland Security Financial and Contracting Oversight Committee, say that the agency, which is run by 92,000 contractors, has turned into a massive jobs program. She said, unfortunately for the taxpayer, cost overruns, scheduled delays, and technical failures are the rule, not the exception. We need to find a better way to do this because we just can't afford the status quo anymore. It's all a result of years of ineffective accountability and a nearly automatic increase in funds. The increases have been so large that many are calling this budget bloated. And that means it may be time for a nuclear diet. In Washington, Amira David, RT. A Japanese court has held a kindergarten and its headmaster responsible in the deaths of five children killed during the tsunami two years ago. Judges ordered them to pay damages of more than $1.7 million. The children attended a privately owned kindergarten in the city of Ishinomaki. They took a school bus home on the day of the disaster. 
The families of four of the children say the defendant sent the bus on a coastal route, even though authorities had issued a tsunami warning. The defendant said they're sorry for the loss of the children, but they argued that they could not have foreseen a tsunami of that magnitude. The presiding judge said the earthquake that preceded it lasted for about three minutes. So he said the defendants were obliged to gather tsunami information through radio and other media. The ruling was the first in a series of civil lawsuits filed by relatives of tsunami victims against schools, companies and managers. Severe tropical storm Mani passed over Japan on Monday, leaving a trail of widespread destruction. Residents were left facing power outages and landslides. Three people were reported killed and six missing. More than 130 others are injured. Two women were killed when landslides destroyed their homes. And a 63-year-old man died after strong winds knocked him off a ladder. In Fukushima Prefecture, four men were swept away by a river. One of them is still missing. Mani passed over Honshu Island, then headed north up Japan's east coast. People in Fukuyama in Kyoto Prefecture saw their river break its banks, flooding streets, houses and farmland. Meteorologists have reclassified Mani as a low-pressure system. They said heavy rains and gusty winds will pass, but officials remain on the alert for further landslides. Weather officials had a new warning system in place when the storm hit, and they may have helped save thousands of people. NHK World Seiko Mita reports. Kyoto residents saw an iconic landmark furnace on Monday. Katsura River submerged Togetsu Bridge when it burst its banks. ここまで本当に広くなるなんて思ってはいなかったので、ちょっとそれが本当にびっくりしました。あと、ロープスオレディハッド250mm of rain fall. Kyoto city leaders acted on the warning 45 minutes later. They advised more than 45,000 people living along the Katsura River to evacuate. At 9.30 a.m., some 268,000 residents were told to get moving. That's one in every five Kyoto citizens. The city's disaster chief faced difficult decisions under pressure. We haven't experienced flooding this bad for some time. We hope to learn from this experience so we can be better prepared for next time. We would like to review our warning system by interviewing local municipalities and residents. The people of Kyoto have suffered the worst flood in decades, but not a single person was lost. Weather officials are hoping they can keep their new system on hand for another rainy day. Seiko Mita, NHK World. The powerful winds unleashed by the storm have cut power to thousands of households and damaged hundreds of homes. In Miyagi Prefecture, the roof of a store was blown away. Debris were scattered dozens of meters away from the shop. We were just getting back on our feet from the tsunami two years ago. I don't know what to say. Many homes in Saitama Prefecture near Tokyo were heavily damaged as the wind tore down power lines and toppled trees. I woke to a shaking noise. I thought it was an earthquake. It only took about a minute before the power pole had fallen over. The storm also damaged homes in Gumma and other prefectures north of Tokyo. Local authorities have set up evacuation shelters for affected residents. Senior North Korean officials are in Beijing to attend a symposium on Pyongyang's nuclear program. Analysts say North Korea is indicating its eagerness to restart multilateral talks on nuclear issues. 
North Korea sent its top diplomat, first vice foreign minister Kim Kae-gwan, and Lee Yong-ho, the chief negotiator, to the six-party talks on Pyongyang's nuclear program. The negotiations are chaired by China. They have been stalled for almost five years. The United States, Japan and South Korea say they won't be sending their top envoys to the symposium, which starts on Wednesday. American researchers said last week that satellite images taken in late August suggest North Korea may have restarted its nuclear reactor in Yongbyon. If confirmed, this decision would represent a violation of UN Security Council resolutions. It's the age, it's just strange. 